y'all didn't prove shit. All this case showed me, and what it should have showed everybody in our community, is that your father, your brother, your nigga, your son can get put in prison and be facing time like that with no evidence. And people should be fucking terrified. I can get into some shit right now and blame you. And if enough people like me, sad. your ass can go to prison. That's very sad. All right, party people, greetings and grace to you. It's your girl here, Clarity Speaks, popping into your timeline with another stream of my consciousness and another reaction to today's trending topics and headlines. And although I'm a little late on this one, today I am reacting to the Tory Lanez and Meg Thee Stallion trial that wrapped up about a couple weeks ago, just before the holidays. And full disclosure here, I am in the camp that believes the verdict was unjust because there was lots of reasonable doubt. And I believe that for three reasons, and I'm going to cut right to the chase and tell you what those three reasons are. Number one, I believe the verdict was unjust because the trial was powered by propaganda. Okay, I'm talking that old school, tired through and delayed 2017 Me Too propaganda. All right. Number two, it was powered by the incompetence of the prosecutors and the LAPD in the gathering and presenting of its evidence. Quiet as is kept, the only thing that was proven beyond a reasonable doubt in that trial was just how far some schools have lowered the bar for law school entry and graduation. I'm talking embarrassing, embarrassing incompetence. It was so embarrassing. I, if I didn't know any better, I would say they were being paid to be that incompetent. I mean, intellectual honesty and the, you know, what they were doing just, just did not mix. So something was awry there and I'm going to leave you to your own imagination to figure that out, but you ain't fooling me. Number three, the other thing that was obvious to me relative to this guilty verdict and what influenced it was how far Rock Nation was willing to go to protect its investment that is Meg the Stallion. Now, it is clear that Rock Nation's founders are, you know, affiliated with the social elites. I mean, they are socially elite themselves. And they also are, you know, buddy buddy with, um, you know, people who manipulate the public opinion politically and socially, right? For, you know, domestic and global agendas. They, they're on that program. However, I think their interest in this case to the degree that they were like just all up and through it um, had more to do with pragmatism, you know, some fiscal of nature. In other words, they had needed an ROI on the investment that is Meg. I suspect that they are in the red and they were going ham like that to get them in the black. I, I believe that was a leading motivation for Rock Nation because they've made major investments uh, in Meg to raise her profile and to get her into these prestigious places, to get her, you know, uh, prestigious awards. She's, you know, hanging out with Chelsea and Hillary Clinton. She's sitting on Gail King's couch. She's doing collaborations with the top, you know, female artists in the game, Beyonce, Nikki and Cardi at one point. And, you know, she's just not giving. <laughs> the ROI just is not giving because word on the street is she's not selling. So, um, yeah, I, I think that was a leading motivation there that she, you know, she's not selling. That's the that's the word on the street. And also the word on the street is the streets are not effing with Meg. OK, uh, you know, rap sales today are already low for the men. Right. Who dominate the industry. They're really low for females, just in general, you know, with no scandal. Um, but people are peeping game, like we the people are peeping game. And uh, we don't like the things that were, you know, revealed during that trial. And it's showing that she is, you know, not being truthful, right? And um, so, yeah, so there, that that leads to that, to that reasonable doubt. But she has overplayed her hand with this me too victim narrative believe all women i'm a black woman and black women are are the you know least uh protected and and all of that all of that narrative and she has um exploited that and um and i really dislike people who ex exploit 
people's real traumas and 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 so on and so forth. But anyway, she's exploited that. And in my opinion, she's exploited it to the point that the only people who are going to be at her concerts are going to be Chelsea, Hillary Clinton, and the, uh, you know, slut walking, vagina hat wearing, you know, toxic feminazi masculina battalion. <laughs> okay, those are, that's her audience now. She's played hard to that, to that, to that narrative. And those are the only people that are going to be rocking to her according to the streets. And finally, I want to just kind of weigh in on this post-trial um, retrospectives and and a lot of the revelations that are coming out with people dropping, uh, you know, leaked um, evidence from the trial and, and so on and so forth, so as to very weirdly to continue to try to sway public opinion. And I agree with one of the cultural commentators or the citizen journalists, shout out to Malago Graham in her question saying, hey. You guys have won the won the trial here. You you got your verdict. You won. So why what is this thing here that we're still trying to uh, sway public opinion in Meg's favor? I mean, you know, she won, right? And again, that is more indication that she hasn't won, and that the streets are not effing with her. And you know, these political manipulators, these social manip- manipulators, are out here reading the tea leaves, the Twitter tea leaves, and knowing that, you know, Twitter is hot with dissent still uh, relative to Meg, and they are still kind of team Tory. And, um, and a lot of the, you know, believe all women narrative is just kind of crashing and burning, right? It's just not intellectually honest. And people who are intellectually honest and concerned about that, which actually proves true, not what we prefer to be true, are looking at her with the side eye, like, girl, you know what I'm saying? Like, well, what is all of this, you know? And so that brings me to another point that I wanted to make to the online citizen journalists, cultural commentators or editorial commentators out there here in the YouTube community. I'm going to put my auntie hat on and I want you to listen to auntie about something she's observing from you all relative to bias. First and foremost, having a bias is not wrong. It is human. It is natural. A synonym for bias could be preference, right? Nothing is wrong with that. Now, when it comes to journalism, you have two tiers. You have your straight reporting of the, of the news, and then you have your editorial commentating analyst type shows, for example, like a Sean Hannity or a Rachel Maddow, a Roland Martin or a um, Mark Lamont Hill. You know what I mean? Those are editorial shows. In the YouTube space, you would have maybe like a lovely Tia DJ Academics and the newcomer on the scene. She's not new, but she's, you know, getting the notoriety due to her coverage of the Tory Lanez trial. Miss Milagro, Milagro Grams, um, you know, these would be considered cultural commentators, your Tasha K's. These are editorial cultural commentators who are having shows that would be um, synonymous, not in terms of quality or content, but in terms of concept as a Tucker Carlson, for example. Tucker Carlson is an editorial person that uh, brings a set of facts of the news and he gives an opinion on that. And so what is involved in that process? It is the process of gathering certain facts and bringing those facts to the people in a credible way. Now, the cure for a bad idea is a better idea. But when you shut out certain ideas out of the marketplace, it can't compete so that the people can have an opportunity to weigh those two ideas so that they can determine and decide, hey, what's the best idea? Right. May the best idea win. Right. So what's the best idea for me and my well-being? Because that's what we're after here. Right. That's why we're on YouTube. We're on here sharing information, first and foremost, for our own well-being and the well-being of our audience. So I want us to think in two tiers. I want us to think about what is good for people's well-being. Right. And what is my bias? And am I going to disclose it? Right. What is good for people's well-being? Truth. Truth is always good for well people's well-being. And relative to bias, the issue is not whether or not anyone has a bias. The problem comes in is what are your biases based on and rooted in? Okay? Are they rooted in truth 
or what proves true or are they rooted in what we prefer to be true or in some sort of lies or deception, right? That is the work and that is your job if you are a credible human being as a commentator anywhere in in a amateur space like YouTube or in a professional space. You know what I'm saying? So as a commentator, I would admonish you guys as auntie here to be about developing a bias towards the truth. Because when you develop a bias towards the truth versus what you prefer to be true personally or per what your racial group prefers to be true, what your uh, mom and aunt prefer to be true, your religious group prefer to be true, your political affiliation prefer to be true, your sorrows prefer to be true. You feel me? Just develop a, a, a bias towards truth. That Let that guide you and you will always stay out of trouble. You will always be looked at as someone who is credible and your audience will respect you, right? So the best that we can do as human beings, flawed human beings who Never have all the details at one time, all the time, especially when stories are breaking. You just basically disclose your bias. You give the facts and you disclose your bias. And then if you have a true bias to truth, what you're going to do is when you get new information, for example, you believe something about A today, you get new information and you find out B is correct. You know what you should do if you're a person of integrity and have properly disclosed your bias, if you actually have one, you may not have a bias. That's cool. You may not have a dog in the fight. But to pretend like we never have a dog in the fight so that we can appear to look credible is 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 cap, as, as you guys say. It's cap. Um, but anyway, the best that you can do is pivot, right? When you get new information, you simply pivot. And if you are a person that proves to your audience that you are about truth and you have a bias towards that which proves true, they're going to rock with you. They're going to be like, oh, child, thank you for putting me on to the correct information. Feel me? And there's nothing wrong with that. Please stop trying to uh, appear as though you have absolutely no bias because you're capping. You do. The best that you can do and the most responsible thing that you can do is disclose it and or suspend it. Right. That that's all that we can do as human beings. And that is what is worthy of respect. And that is a platform that is worthy to be trusted and is credible. Anybody who is doubling down on a set of facts. OK. Or, or a certain narrative around or, or a, a certain narrative that has interpreted the, the set of facts in a way that favors one person over the other because the political manipulators and powers that be have, you know, hit your line and threatened you or you just you know have your own issues that cause you to be triggered by a certain set of facts and all of that you're not trustworthy you're you're not trustworthy if you want to double down on, on on a narrative in the face of reality in the face of intellectual honesty and you want to be intellectually dishonest over a set of facts if you want to just suspend your common sense you are not credible and that is going to find you out. And if I may put on get in my spiritual bag, God is not pleased with that sort of thing. That is that is deception. Now you are siding with deception willingly. It's one thing, though, if you're doing so unaware. But once you are presented with some new information and facts that are verifiable, because that's the other key. People are presenting facts, but we want we want people are presenting information and calling it facts. We want verifiable facts. OK. So if anyone is presenting verifiable facts that challenges your current position and you are unwilling to backpedal, booty pop, and pivot off of it, then you are not credible. And again, my admonition as auntie to all of the online commentators and creators is to just simply develop a bias towards that which proves true, have the humility to pivot, backpedal, booty pop off of any thing that you discover that you have been promoting or, or believing that was incorrect and set the record straight and you good and you have my respect and everyone who is intellectually honest respect anybody that comes for you and wants to persecute you for it and and all of that they're not your people they're not your people they're not your audience and you don't want that sort of audience and I know again the reason that we're doing this so much is because Political pol manipulators are, are trying to persecute us and, and are coming for us and don't respect, uh, you know, what you do here online. But as you see, the online citizen journalists are giving the uh, legacy media 
a run for their money. Why? Because we are approaching the space with this bias towards the truth and uh, seeking credible information. So keep leading in that and don't let the, the popularity, fame, the followers that you gain turn you away from that. Keep having a bias for truth um, as your compass and as your guide. And if anyone want to come to you and tell me, you biased, you can say, yep, I'm biased. I disclosed my bias. You didn't hear me. OK, if you're not biased and you don't have a dog in the fight, then disclose that as well. Oh, one more thought for the people in the back who are allergic to being wrong. OK, and for those who have an issue with deductive reasoning, in order for anything that I just said to make sense, you have to be a believer in things being right and wrong. Of course, there are things in life that are great. But there are many more things in life that are just basic right and wrong. And if you have an allergy to being wrong, if you are triggered and repulsed by the fact that someone could be right and another person could be wrong, then you're not going to feel me. But in order to understand what I just said about bias and why it is important that you have a bias towards truth so that you can as often as possible be on the right side of history, then you need to understand right and wrong. Okay. Now on to the retrospective between Milagro Graham and DJ Academics. I'm going to play that and then I'll be back with the rest of my commentary on that. Yo, it's like having a, a, a puzzle and you're like, well, this would fit over here. And you're just trying to include it because I'm still trying to figure out why the hell the, all the stories so different. Right. And uh, you know what? I think about that too, but I put my focus on the central question, which for me is, did he shoot at someone with intent to harm? I no. do not think that happened. No. All that other shit, the story's all over the place. I don't know what the hell happened out there. Y'all was fucking clowning. Drunk as fuck, acting a fool in that man's goddamn driveway. That's what y'all was doing. I don't know what happened with that shit, but I do not think that that man shot to harm her with the intent to harm me, like she said. Uh, no, I don't believe that. Mm. What do you think is going to happen now for Tori? I think that they'll do an appeal, and I, th I think that he'll fight it. What'll happen? We don't know. Look what just happened, you know? So I don't know. I think hopefully um, an appeal, you know, is successful, and he can get out, you know what I'm saying, and, and go about his fucking life. Um, but God forbid he would have to stay, you know? I think I think they're going to throw the book at him on sentencing. I think so. Yeah, I do. I How do. many years? I said between four and six. Four and six out of the 22? Well, the 22 is a fictional number. It's yeah. a fictional number because if you, take, if you yeah. take all the counts, the only way he does 22 is if a judge, number one, fucking just hates him and says, you have to serve every sentence to the max concur uh, consecutively, mm -hmm. which means you got to do nine for this, right. eight for this, six for this. Right. I, I think that's how it kind of like plays plays out. Most people are going to say, hey, listen, you're going to do all this shit currently. Which means, yo, just do the time and then you're good. And you're doing time for multiple I think charges. less than 10, but I think it'll be substantial. And for me, anything is substantial if, if you don't feel like justice is served. So I, I feel like one fucking day is too much. Y'all didn't prove shit. All this case showed me and what it should have showed everybody in our community is that your father, your brother, your nigga, your son can get put in prison and be facing time like that with no evidence. And people should be fucking terrified. I can get into some shit right now and blame you. And if enough people like me, sad. your ass can go to prison. That's very sad. What Milagro says is absolutely correct, guys. We need to be very afraid because if this is this is the precedent that's being set and we're seeing it in all arenas, and that's how I know that this entertainment class and the broader political global agenda is attached because we're seeing it with people like Andrew Tate, uh, Alex Jones, Kanye West, you know, the people that are that have influence that are given an opinion that is different from the cultural political manipulators narrative are being uh, persecuted. And then we saw also the persecution again of these citizen journalists um, as well, because they were not going in this narrative. This is a very dangerous precedent and we need to pay attention. And again, if you are an intellectually honest person, you cannot say that 
this man should be facing 22 years based off of what was presented in that court. The fact is Meg the Stallion did get hurt. Something happened to her. The million dollar question is, did it happen to her as she said it did? And there is too much conflicting evidence. Okay, you have your star witness come into the courtroom and recant everything she said in her investigations. Well, if you know, just if you'd watch just a little bit of law and order, you know that when you tell the police officer something and it's of significance, he's going to say, are you willing to testify to that in court? And if you do, then what you say in court trumps what you said anywhere else because you're now under oath. And the fact that we are playing dumb, like we don't understand that, is again showing that I'm de- we're dealing with intellectually dishonest people who are being so purposely because you're not that dumb. You're not that dumb. It's not easy to get into law school, right? Well, maybe it is. I don't know. But the, again, that brings back my earlier question. Like, like the bar has either gotten very, very low, which is absolutely possible uh, nowadays. But some, come on now, we 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 got some reading. And co- you got to have some reading and comprehension, though to be able to get into law school so come on come on so anyway um i'm gonna get off my soapbox here but that's my uh, my two cents on this trial and you tell me what you think you know what say you you know am i on one am i am i on to something holla at your girl you okay because i'm out of here gone deuces <laughs>